Today I'm with Eric Bell. Eric is the owner operator of New Body Training. Eric is a go-to person for me for everything fitness, whether that be the latest exercise trend or nutritional information. Eric's knowledge of how and why the body works is very extensive. I've dragged him out of the gym today to discuss intermittent fasting. Eric introduced me to intermittent fasting over coffee several months ago. And since then, I've recommended it to some of my clients when they've hit sticking points and plateaus on the way to their weight loss goals. They've had great success. You can reach Eric by emailing him at newbodytraining at yahoo.com. So Eric, can you define intermittent fasting for us? Intermittent fasting is the uh, period of time in a day or a week where you're not eating. Uh, we fast every day when we're sleeping. So if you sleep eight hours, that's eight hours of fasting. And then our first meal is breakfast. Um, uh, fasting can be broken into daily fasts, where you fast for 16, 18, 20 hours, or block fasting, where you fast for a day, two days, and sometimes more. So why would you do this? What's the goal? That's What's a good the question. The, the, the reason there's varied reasons why someone would intermittent fast. Um, a lot of people fast now for the aesthetic. Uh, they fast, they give their, cell, their body uh, time to burn through glycogen stores, and then once you burn through those, you can get into your fat stores a little easier. Think of it like this. You have a, a fridge full of food. You finish off all that food, and then you have to go to the freezer. The freezer is the fat. It's a little harder to access that. So you're giving yourself um, enough time to get rid of the immediate calories mm -hmm. and then get into the stored calories. Now, you're, we're burning fat when we're sleeping, we're burning fat while we're sitting here, but the percentages change depending on how, depending on how long we go without eating. And that, turn, that, that, that going into the uh, excess, the auxiliary, happens during the fasting time right. of the burning. Right. So is there a certain timing to this? I mean, you talk about days or hours. Right. I mean, what, what's recommended? Most people, well, it depends what the reason is. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, a doctor named Jason Fung who has a book out, I believe it's called The Obesity Code. And he talks about fasting, or using fasting for his patients that have type 2 diabetes. Um, so the problem with diabetes would be uh, your, the insulin that your body's putting out isn't enough to get insulin to do what it it's supposed to do. You become insulin insensitive. So what he found is if he fasts his clients, their, their need for insulin diminishes or decreases. Now this is all, all done under supervision. Mm -hmm. um, but their need for insulin decreases because they have long periods of time where they're not spiking their insulin. Right. right. So for instance, I have children and if I'm yelling at them all the time, do this, do that, after a while, what I say to them doesn't, they're not hearing it. Right. Your body does that with insulin. Okay. So if you're constantly fed and the insulin's being secreted at high levels, after a while your body gets used to it, it downregulates. So you're not getting the same effect from the insulin that you would if it was less frequent or less high. So what about for uh, fat loss reasons? Uh, fat loss reasons, it, well think about it like this. If you're constantly fed, mm -hmm. you constantly have calories going in. Why would your body feel the need to go to where you have it stored? Right. Right, right. All right. There's constantly food there, and if you just if you're constantly feeding, it's going to store. It's going to store. You know, right, right. lose that. Which goes back to the whole thing. I mean, for years we talked about eating five times a day. Right. I mean, and now that now I mean, I've been looking at it's like well, then you're constantly putting calories. Right. Too. Right. So you never. So what you're saying is you never get a chance to get to that auxiliary. Exactly. Or that store. Right. So is there a certain number of calories you eat at different times? Um. What. If you could count calories with it. If you, it depends on what you, again, what you're using it for. If you're using it to, um, uh, let's say, become more insulin sensitive, mm -hmm. or to get into your fat stores, mm -hmm. um, or one of the reasons why I like to use it is there's something called autophagy, okay. autophagy. Okay. So, and that usually happens after uh, 24 hours. Um, that's where your body takes old or worn out proteins, tissues, and breaks them down, and then when you start to feed again, it turns on your own stem cells, mm -hmm. and you rejuvenate these tissues. <laughs> so there's a whole longevity right. way of thinking about 
fasting, uh -huh. um, you don't lower your metabolism. If you were just to decrease uh, calorie intake, you get an adaptation to that, mm -hmm. and you end up with a slow metabolism. For some reason, with fasting, let's say you took a 20 hours and didn't eat, and then you took in 2,500 calories, 3,000 calories, whatever your regular caloric intake is, mm -hmm. um, you'll reap the benefits of the, the fat burning, but you won't lower your metabolism. All right. So one thing that we discussed uh, when you first talked to me about it was that the way you would fast would be, and I want you to touch on this, is you would um, eat at certain times during the day, stop at a certain time, and then not eat for several hours, and very much into the morning right. also before you would break the fast. Right. And so, so touch on that. What's okay. the timing so, of that? And, and, and what are the calories? Is there a suggested calories in certain types of food? There, there is. It depends on what you use it for. Um, if you're using it to, let's say, get leaner, mm -hmm. and it would, it would be a good idea to figure out how much you're eating in the first place. So this is where tracking macros would come in, finding out what is actually going in there initially. Um, but once you figure out what the macro should be, how much carbs, how much fat, how much protein, what I do is I sleep and I put off my first meal until 12 or 1 o'clock. First meal not till 12 or 1? 12 or 1 o'clock. And what time do you usually wake up? I get up at uh, 4 in the morning, okay. 4, 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Wow. Um, and it took a while to get used to that. Yeah, I'll bet. Yeah, uh, it took a while to get used to that, but I'll put it off until uh, 12 or 1 o'clock and then I'll usually stop eating around 7 or 8 o'clock. Okay. Well, you'll, you'll stop eating, but will you have like different meals between 12 and 7? Will you eat it then at 2 or 3 or 4 or through the day? That's a good question. It, it, uh, this eating starts, my breakfast starts at 12 or 1 o'clock. Okay. Now, depending on how I feel, I might eat from 12 or 1 o'clock, and that meal could stretch out for <laughs> a few hours. I'm kind of snacking on whatever it is that's supposed to be taken okay. in that day. You're grazing. Yes. So I'm grazing from 12 till about 7 o'clock. Okay. And if sometimes I don't feel that hungry, I'll eat one meal and I'll be done, and other times I'm ravenous. So it's day to day, and yeah. depending on what kind of energy you yeah. put out. Yeah. Alright, so I want to go back then, is there, then do you care what kind of food you're eating? Or you should. Or they're just calories? Mm, you should. I, I mean, ideally, uh, you should eat real food, mm -hmm. not too much. As opposed to bars and yeah, stuff like and that? Yeah, real food. You should uh -huh. eat real food, okay. ideally. Um, you care about protein? And carbs only. See, I, I don't really. I tracked macros for a while, mm -hmm. just to see what was going in, and then I'm the kind of person that likes to play with those uh, mm -hmm. those macros to see you know, what'll happen. Yeah. Um, and what I found is if I eat mostly vegetation, I get a decent amount of meat in there. Okay. I, I get leaner. You know what really happened? I, I stumbled on this because we have busy, busy schedules. So mm -hmm. I'm working. I'm training people early, and I don't eat anything. I'll have some coffee. No cream or sugar, <laughs> the actual calories. And then I, I noticed by the end of the week, I felt I looked better and leaner come Friday from a whole week of not eating during the morning into the afternoon and eat, and there'd be all kinds of garbage going in there later on. Okay. So I, but my system's a little more forgiving for that, but it's not healthy. And then by the end of the week, I'd be leaner, and then I'd feed on the weekend, you fill up, you look a little puffier. So okay. I sort of stumbled into the fasting just because of work. Yeah. And schedule-wise. Yeah. Right. Uh, what would you suggest to a beginner? How does somebody do it? Do they ease into it or do they just blow into it? And, uh... Well, um, if the beginner is someone who has adult onset diabetes, mm -hmm. uh, they shouldn't mess with it. Okay. For instance, my mom. My mom, don't eat so much carbohydrates, you know, have some nuts, have some vegetation. The problem is she takes medication for type 2 diabetes. If she doesn't eat a lot of carbohydrates, mm -hmm. she'll have health problems. It could take her out. Right. Um, so if someone is not on medicine mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. blood sugar, yeah, uh, then they could put off first meal, maybe a couple hours. Or another one is if they are anorexic mm -hmm. or they have eating disorders, or they are they're sort of on that line where they could have an eating disorder, they might not want to do that. What about the uh, quote-unquote normal person that walks in the gym? The normal person. If they're trying to grow, it's probably not the best strategy. What, what about when they're just trying to lose weight? Trying to lose weight. Let's talk about I, weight I would loss. say very good strategy. Okay. Okay, but do they 
do they not eat till noon or do they not eat till eight, nine, and ease into that? I mean, that sounds like a huge exactly. time period. Well, here's what I'd say. Put off first meal, mm -hmm. and once you get that hungry feeling, like I gotta eat, mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. angry feeling, right. eat. Okay. Because it's just an But you've got to get to that point, though. Yeah, hunger. Don't wait. Well, I exactly. mean, don't do it before then. No, no, right? no. Put, put it up until you're hungry. Yeah. There, hunger is good. There are hormones right. to get released from your hunger. It's natural to be hungry. We evolved being hungry. Right. There'd be food, and then there'd be no food. And there'd be food, and then there'd be no food. There'd right. be days with no food. Right. So um, put it off until they're hungry, and then eat. Because it's not a diet, it's an approach to eating, allowing yourself time to use up what you've already stuck in there. So isn't somebody, though, that if they're used to eating at 7 or 8 in the morning, they're going to be hungry at 7 or 8. Don't they have to push through a little bit? A little bit of hunger would be good. Okay, so maybe a half hour, an hour, and then? Or what would you suggest? You I, know what I, mean? I would say try to put it off. But if it's because some people really are so used to regular carbohydrate. Right, regular right. Meals, at certain times. That yeah. they, they, their systems aren't effective in switching over to fat burning mm -hmm. or burning through the fuel they have stored. They're very inefficient, so they get... Uh, hypoglycemic, they get irritable. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things associated with not being able to effectively burn the, the calories you already had stored in your body. So they, uh, like with any other thing you're practicing, the more you practice it, the more efficient your body becomes okay. at using what you've already stuck in it. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's efficient at storing it. Mm -hmm. Especially if someone's overweight, they know it's efficient at storing it. Right. But it's very inefficient at taking it out of the storage uh -huh. and using it. Right. So they have to become more efficient at using flex fuels, which is the glycogen they stored and the fat they stored, right. and giving it time. Um, wh what have you learned since you began this? And do you have any tricks up your sleeve or anything to suggest for someone starting out? Um, the first thing, I would suggest not trying intermittent fasting first. Okay. First, I would suggest trying to eat real food. Uh huh. Um, there's a guy named Paulin, I think Dr. Michael Paulin, I think his name is. Uh, his seven words are eat real food, mm -hmm. not too much, mostly vegetation. Okay. That, that's, that statement right there says it all. Eat real food, not highly processed foods. Um, real food, mostly vegetation, enough nourishment. Now, every time you eat, there's a certain amount of aging that occurs from that. Mm -hmm. So if you're constantly feeding yourself, Mm -hmm. There's with a lot of food, you're actually prematurely aging yourself too. Mm -hmm. So, I get back to longevity. Yeah, yeah, right. So I I I actually sat with a, a lady who's done this program, the intermittent fasting, had great success, and she had some questions mm -hmm. to throw in. Um, can you exercise during the fast? I did just before I got here, but I haven't eaten yet. And when was the last time you ate then? To, and it is uh, by the way, ten in the morning, I ten a.m. Uh, Seven o'clock. This morning? No, no. Last night. Yeah, okay. Last night. So you right now you're 15 hours yeah. in. And when will you eat? I will eat probably at one o'clock. Okay. And and so you worked out. So yes. no problem. Uh, somebody is beginning. They're going to have a, a little struggle at first. Oh yeah. Something they have to push through. Oh yeah. But it's not wrong to do it. Right. And, uh, you know, um, you got to use uh, a little common sense with it. I mean, if you are going from constantly fed. And then you're going. To, you're gonna to try to put off the meals and train. You want to put your toe in. Yeah. See how it feels. Right. You don't want to end up passed out or having a problem over, you know, trying to push it too far. Right. You can't run a marathon if you haven't trained for it. So okay. it takes a little bit of practice. Um, can is there any benefit to extending the fast? Yes. Uh, well, if you're very lean, um, a block fast or a fast that's a day or more might not be a good idea. A block fast. A what block fast. That would be like if, if I said, all right, don't eat for two days. Okay. Just water. Okay. Because you need that daily. Okay. Um, a block fast might not be a good idea for someone who's very lean. Okay. Because they don't have much. Gets too unhealthy. Uh, they're, yeah, it is very unhealthy at that point. Right. Um, the health benefits associated with intermittent fasting are insulin sensitivity. Mm -hmm. And the big one is the autophagy, it, which, whereas your body goes in and, and takes the proteins and worn out cells breaks those down, and then you, you activate your stem cells. Okay. All right. Kind and of cleans them out, though. Yeah. Right. It's, it's, it's like if we were going to, um, let's say, redo a house, we'd have to tear everything down. And right. So it does that with your body, too. And that usually happens the 24-hour, maybe, I wouldn't go longer than three days, but <laughs> <laughs> right. three days. But people are asked to fast for, for a long period of time before blood work. Yes. All kinds of surgeries. Sure, they are. Yeah. And they're, they're, 
you know, the numbers improve, they're fine. Right. But the main benefit, I would say, is uh, that it's easier to maintain um, 9% body fat, mm -hmm. and uh, the autophagy. Okay. So you touched on this earlier, and I'm asked this often, I, ha I kind of struggle with this a little bit. Uh, does drinking coffee or diet soda, and I know diet soda is kind of a no-no for yeah. sure, affect the fast? Diet soda, I haven't seen it affect the fast. I, you said I, what I recommend diet soda? Well, you can't, right. I'm not a Right, I wouldn't recommend it either. Um, coffee, if there's cream or sugar in there, technically you're breaking the fast. Okay. What about black coffee? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I've, done it, I've done it with uh, heavy cream or uh, coconut oil, but technically that's not fasting. And that possibly is shutting down the benefits of the remodeling of my tissue, so the rejuvenating my tissue. So black coffee is okay, but, yes. but nothing black added to it? Nothing added. No, nothing nothing added. That's when it messes with it. Right. Okay. So teas, coffees, uh, no calories. If somebody plateaus on, uh, on the fasting, how do you tweak it? Do you change the time? Do you change calories? Usually, you usually it's the, you change your macros. Um, macros meaning? What? Meaning uh, your proteins, your carbs, and your fat. So if someone's having, uh, if they're plateauing, what you do is you increase their vegetation, you cut back on, definitely there'd be no sugar in there, but uh, you cut back on the starches, um, and not a ton of protein either, because you'll have an insulin sort of reaction with uh, too much protein too. If you go super high in the proteins, mm. essentially you're eating expensive carbohydrates, because you're going to convert some of that. Okay. So um, you increase the vegetation, you definitely decrease the carbohydrate intake uh, as, as far as starches go, um, and sugars, and uh, the protein would stay probably moderate. And you probably could take some more fat too. Because you need some other form of fuel besides. Okay. So you me protein. you mess with the protein carb yeah. ratios a little protein bit. Protein carbs and fats. Um, in closing, what else would you want people to know about this? I mean, we've touched on a lot, but um, got? the main thing is that it's not religion. If you're hungry, eat. If you're not hungry, don't eat. Uh, it works best if you eat real food. It's better to eat real food. Um, and it. The weight loss from it isn't just the fact that maybe you're taking in less calories, it's that you're giving yourself time to burn through what you've already stuck in there. And um, if it works for you, good. If it doesn't work, then it's, it's not for everybody. Some people just can't handle yeah. uh, not eating. They want to eat. And you can also play with the times. Think about it like this. Uh, when we were kids, I think we were around the same age, so mm -hmm. there was breakfast, no snack, lunch, no snack, right, right, dinner. Right. Right, so there wasn't a whole lot of grazing going on. You'd eat, and so maybe just cut back on the snacking and put some fixed times in there where you can take your calories out. Right, it's not right. intermittent fasting, but it's better than feeding yourself. Up. Right. Well, I think that's going to wrap it up. Thanks, Eric, and thanks everyone for tuning in. Remember, you can reach Eric by emailing him at newbodytraining at yahoo.com. And if you have a topic you'd like me to look into fitness-wise and find the answers and do the research to, please email me at carl at longevitypt.com, that's Carl with a K, or call me at 602-402-4780, and check out our website at longevitypt.com.